Hello, I'm Mike Bain from Christian Voice New Zealand. Hey, I just want to start by reading a couple of scriptures from the book of Acts to give us some sort of context to today's message. In verse 19, uh, there we read, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Yeah, it was all a bit dramatic a few years ago. Even I was sucked in, yep, even me, because various Christian commentators were saying that God had a message for us, and they, they wrote book after book, and eventually I caved in, and I have to admit I bought one. It was all about the phenomena, about the appearance of the two blood moons within a certain time period, you may remember it. Now, these people amongst them were John Hagee and Jonathan Kahn. They were amongst many leading biblical scholars who had looked at biblical history and aligned prophecy with the event. So, of course, I was excited because, like all Christians, we were waiting, waiting, and, well, just waiting for a sign from God that something was about to happen. I can't say that I was disappointed when, it, when nothing happened, apart from the blood moons, but I did manage to get some fantastic photos of the moon. But reality check for me and others, it was a bit like the Y2K bug was going to be the end of technology, and older Christians will well remember the days leading up to 1975 when Herbert W. Armstrong predicted the end of the world. It's almost laughable now, but having invested about 30 bucks on a book, I could feel my Scottish ancestry rolling in its grave to think I'd been suckered into this disillusionment. I feel so ashamed. I should have taken note of Jesus' words in Matthew 24, where he said, But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So, lesson learned. Back in my earlier days of ministry, though, one of my presentations about the state of the nations was interrupted by, dare I say, a grumpy old man. He accused me of misleading the audience. Now, he had only arrived back in the country and heard about my lecture, and his late arrival hadn't gone unnoticed, as uh, people who come and late do. But neither had, he, he, neither had he heard the whole lecture. We'd settled him down and afterwards agreed to get together for a coffee and a chat. Turns out he'd written a couple of books about how the world was going to end, and he eventually agreed with me to disagree on the War of Armageddon and how Jesus would return, but the emphasis of his book was, and he backed it up with scripture, that oh, we the people of earth are going to be consumed by fire brought about by solar flares. I know, right? Well, he had sold about ten books, so obviously he must have been an expert. But he had a following, right? But I wasn't going to be suckered in again and spend more money on a book after all I paid for his coffee. But he was right. The Bible does talk about solar flares. And it's the reason, again, I'm addressing it. So go back to Jesus, who, in Matthew 24, told his apostles when they asked about the last days in verse 3, they said, tell us, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. But note how Jesus responded to them in verse 4. He said, watch out, watch out that no one deceives you. Then in the following composite sign, he spoke these words down in verse 32. He said, now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. By using that scripture, then you can understand when natural things happen, some people will just get excited, like the blood moons. And I'm not suggesting that they weren't signs in the heavens, but you know what? No one's ever written a book about what the sign was. But here we are, in 2004, now only weeks away from another celestial natural event. Now, if you haven't heard about it by now, you probably don't have friends that are Americans, but just wait. It's going to be on every news channel, even here in New Zealand. Well, given our media's propensity not to report real news, maybe not. But once again, although no books have been uh, produced about this, but Christians in America are getting excited about the event, forecasted to happen on April the 8th. Now, it's billed as the most dramatic solar eclipse in the U.S. history. It's being called the 
the great American eclipse of 2024. Don't you just hate it when Americans make something up when it's all about them? It's an eclipse. It's a natural phenomenon. But that hasn't stopped Americans from travelling, or they're going to travel and take time off work, so they can see it. And here I spend 30 bucks on a book and I, and I hear the rumblings of, of my ancestors. NASA, though, claims this is going to be the most populated eclipse in the US, with 31.5 million people able to just walk outside of their homes and experience the event. Now, talk about hysteria, it's just one eclipse. It's not like it's never happened before, and that is correct, because what you have to do now is to take note of the path of two previous eclipses, and this is what you get. So, if you put the path of the Great American Eclipse of 2024, the path of the Ring of Fire Solar Eclipse of October 14th, 2023, and the path of the Great American Eclipse of the 2017 all on a map, then you've got to they will combine to form a great Paleo-Hebrew Aleph over America. Now, an Aleph, for those who don't know, and I had to look it up, is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. But wait, as Americans put it, but wait, there's more. If you just put the path of the Great American Eclipse of 2024 and the path of the Great American Eclipse of 2017 on a map, they combine to, make, to form a giant Paleo-Hebrew Tav over America. Just so you know, a Hebrew Tav is the 22nd and final letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So, at a stretch, after looking at the sky, you're really going to be pushing to get the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. After some time doing some research, I just can't find any biblical reference or meaning of the first and last letter of the al uh, Hebrew alphabet, just as I can't find any deeper belief in A or Z. America being America, and remember, it's all about them, some Christian writers are looking at the Tav as an X and saying this is God rejecting the US as a nation or maybe just the states where the eclipse occurs because of its decadent culture. Whatever. Look, to be honest, I think it's a huge stretch to say this, this is an event is going to be a sign from God. If people want to look for a sign from the heavens, there is only one that's described, and that's in Revelation, and it's one I won't be taking any time off work or travelling to see it. As Revelation 1-7 says, Look, he's coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who's pierced him, and all peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. I'm looking forward to that day. But just before I go, a quick word on the solar flares from the sun. Space scientist Rob Steinberg says they happen all the time, and they are no cause for alarm. He said some people worry about a gigantic killer solar flare could hurl enough energy to destroy Earth, but this is not actually possible. And NASA has also confirmed solar cycles repeat every 11 years. So yeah, stay awake, stay on the watch. There's plenty of things happening in this world which can, well, which you can get excited about as the end draws near. Looking to the skies for signs, whether it be aliens, blood moons, eclipses, or solar flares, let those gullible in the US to it. But I can tell you, there is a time coming when we will all look up and know our Saviour is indeed near.